Hello and welcome to a new lesson in Linux. This lesson is about the Linux file system hierarchy. Okay, now why do we need to know the Linux file system hierarchy? Because you need to know where do you store your files in Linux. And as you see there are many directories in here and we need to know what is the function or the role of those directories. Okay, the first thing we have here in Linux is the slash or the slash root. Uh, the root is the location in which the Linux is installed with all its directories and content. Under the root or the slash root you will find the rest of the directories. So the root is the basis. Any directory will be under slash root. The first directory we have over here is the bin directory so if you double click on the bin directory to open it in here you will find the essential commands that any user can execute in the Linux for example here in the search if I type CD as you, as you see it will take me to the CD command right now I will go back to the root Okay, the second directory we have over here is the boot directory. The boot directory contains the essential files that are used by the Linux operating system to work. Inside the boot directory you will find the kernel file for the Linux. Okay, over here we have the dev directory. The dev directory contains any device as a form of file because the Linux sees any device in the form of a file. In the dev directory you will find any hard disk that we have attached to the Linux, any CD-ROM and any flash memory. Then the next we have here is the etc directory. The etc directory contains all of the configuration files of the Linux. I'll click on it. Okay, now for example, here if I search, sorry about that, if I search for, uh, for example, the word host name, it will appear for us the configuration file of the host name, the name of the machine that we are working on. If you change this name, for example, to Linux or Udemy, then the machine name will be changed according to the name that you have typed. So the etc directory contains the configuration files of the Linux. Okay, so I'll click on this button here to get back to the root. Right, now we have here the home directory. The home directory any user that you create on Linux will have a home directory inside this home directory. If you get inside the directory, you will find, as you see, the user that I have created previously. Okay, now here is the lib directory. The lib directory contains the library files. In this directory you will find the modules of the kernel and some files that are shared between applications on Linux. Okay, now the next directory uh, over here is the MNT or the mount directory. In this directory you will find any media that you add to the Linux either if it is CD-ROM or flash memory. Uh, this directory over here is the PROC directory. The PROC directory contains files that have information about the operating system or the machine that we are working with or working on. Now for example if I click to open it and then I search for CPU. It will get me to this information files. As you see here, 
there is this file CPU info and this file contains information about the processor, the type of processor and the processor catch. Right now I will get back. Okay, now to the root directory. Here I have the root directory and this is the home directory for the user root. And now there is a difference between the slash root and the directory root. The slash root is the location in which the Linux is installed with all its directories and content. But the directory root is the home directory for the user root and the home directory of the user root is not in the home directory of the normal users for security reasons. Alright here the sbin, the sbin directory like the bin directory, the sbin directory saves all of the commands that are executed by the system administrator that has all the permissions in the Linux. I'll click on it and for here for example if I type F disk okay here it appeared for me the F disk command the the command F disk that is used to partition the hard disk this command cannot be executed except by a user that has all permissions on the system okay now I'll get back to the root here is the TMP directory the TMP directory contains temporary files and directories that may be used by an application for a temporary period of time or you may be installing an application that may need to store some files here until the installation is complete and because they are temporary files and directories the moment you reboot the system all of the files and directories that are in here get deleted so it is required or recommended that you don't store important files in the TMP directory because any user can access this directory and edit its files. Okay, now to this directory over here, which is the var directory. The var directory contains files that grow in size as time goes by, like the log files and the mail files if you have a MySQL database. Thank you for watching and see you in the next session.